room and do introductions before we get into the uh, meeting. Um, at this point, I think we need two people from each jurisdiction to vote, so we may have to alter the um, agenda until we get another city representative. But let's start out, we'll go around the table and then start all, all the way in, to my left in the corner and just go around and introduce yourself. Uh, here at the table, I'm Tyrone Nelson, um, and I represent the county of Hawaii. Cheryl Adams here at TCC. Bonnie Ashley, General Council. Lincoln Saunders, representing the city of Richmond. Todd Garrett, in Director County. Dan Schmidt, in Director County. Dave Anderson, Chesterfield. Clark Smith, Chesterfield. Jim Engel, Chesterfield County. All right, let's. John Mamos, GRTC. Tony Berry, GRTC. Stephanie Carr, RV Rapid Campus. Amy Lawson, Community Member and the Friend of Fire Transit. Uh, Julian Belair, RV Rapid Transit. Brandon Butler, GRTC. John Harper, GRTC. Tanya Thompson, Director of Procurement, GRTC. Good morning, Ashton Mason, Manager of Organizational Management, GRTC. Stephen McAllen, GRTC. Sam Smith, GRTC. Jamie Swift, GRTC. Jensen Zarallo, GRTC, CFAO. Adrian Jordan, GRTC, Chief Staff. Joe Dillon, GRTC. Richard Hankins, I gave out the Monica Potter, GRTC. Anthony Potter, Director of Risk Management. Tim Dillon, Chief of Trade Properties. Ken Lance, Lynn RBA. Charles Romano, Resident of Chesterfield. Dexter, Director of ICs. Good morning, Bob Sixth, right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for <clears throat> joining us for this um, April meeting of GRTC. I'm going to ask Ms. Mason if you don't mind to get us started with the uh, public comments. Good morning, Mr. Board Chair and members of the board. The public meeting notice, meeting agenda, and agenda attachments for this April 18th, 2023 standing meeting of the boards of GRTC, Drive Finders, Old Dominion Transit Management Company, were posted on April 11th at RideGRTC.com. Per the meeting notice, all written comments received via email by Ashley Mason prior to 5 p.m. on the day preceding a meeting were provided to all members of the board the night before the meeting are read during the public comment period of the meeting by staff following a two-minute speaking limit and will be included in the minutes of the meeting. Also, for the meeting notice, this meeting is being live-streamed on YouTube. This meeting, I received two public comments in writing. They are, one, my name is Joyce Freeman and I take the 4B. I live off of Williamsburg Road. We only have one bus and it's hard, hard to get home. It's just a headache sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't come, so we need another bus out there. Two, my name is Gloria Octave and riding a bus is actually new to me. I haven't rode a bus in maybe 10 years, a long time. Unfortunately, I was in a car accident and my car was totaled. I was trying to get over the drama of being in an accident and over the idea of riding the bus, and it was kind of scary. But I called the number and they were very helpful and gave me the route I needed to take. It was a 91 connector and they got it. It was just walking distance from where I live. Yay! Then I came out yesterday to try it out and just came to roll on. I was excited to get out of my house and out of my community and so I went grocery shopping. I had a little groceries to go back. I met so many nice people along the way. It was so awesome. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone um, here to uh, make any public comments? Anyone wants to speak? All right, seeing no one. Thank you again, Ms. Mason. Uh, approval of the March 21st minutes. Um, you guys received those already. It's a little second. Who moved it? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard it down there. I'll, I'll move it. Okay. Second. All right. All right. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The consent agenda. Um, you should have received information to give some background. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions on the maintenance renewal, Dexter Hurd is here. Real time passenger information sign is same thing. Um, fixed bus routes, Tony Bird, transfer center restaurant, same thing. Adrian Torres with the um, 
transportation plan, uh, sure items with the wage rates and um, resolution revisions. I assume is somebody will answer that if you have any questions. All right. Are we good with the consent agenda? Any questions? <clears throat> All right. So can we get? Uh, can we have someone make a motion to um, accept the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All right. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, I did ask Cheryl to um, make a comment or two about the wage rates at least before we move on to our information items. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I would just like to say that management is excited that we have this in place. We feel that it will have a positive impact on our re recruitment and retention. Management and union worked to reach this agreement quickly. The union was, um, they are excited about this. All the employees are excited, so we are excited that it will have a, a positive impact on our employee, our workforce. All right, that's good news. So we have made a commitment to do what we can to, um, to be leaders in the area as it relates to um, transportation, and I think this moves us there. And um, it's really exciting. You know, we board. Some of us came on in March, and then I think some toward the end of the year, and to make the forward progress that we're making, um, not just with the uh, infrastructure, but also with um, our employees, are, uh, is very exciting. So, thank you for everyone who has something to do with uh, Adrian and Cheryl in particular, but I'm certain that others who have worked hard to get us to this place. So, thank you. Um, Information items, Ms. Thompson, if you don't mind, updated list of weeks and items. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good morning. The procurement report for April can be found on pages 23 and 24 of your board packet. There are no new procurements. Uh, this month. However, we did have one procurement between uh, 50,000 and 100,000 that required the board chair's approval. The purchase was to renew the specialized transportation scheduling software support agreement for an additional six months while staff works with VIA, GRTC's new scheduling software provider. The cost of the renewal is $72,294. I have no other updates for you at this time. Are there any questions? Questions. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Our staff reports, and um, let's just follow them as they are listed. Uh, safety first, and service report. And operator uh, safety. I mean staffing, vehicle facility report, and maintenance staffing, so on. So, Mr. Carter, if you don't mind coming forward. And again, for those of you who are here, a lot of the discussion, particularly on the consent agenda, um, that conversation happened in committee. And so, I don't want you to think we're just flying through and not doing anything, but we have hours long committee meetings. And so, yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I'll be going on the safety performance report for the month of March. Um, this is found on pages 25 through 29 of the board packet. But starting off with the numbers, we did see a slight incline from this month compared to last month, um, just uh, about five accidents. Um, that's kind of tra traditional for this time of year. Usually we see increases March, April, May, June through that area. Um, so far as trending reports, what we saw, saw were uh, fixed objects, that type of thing, minor accidents, but things that we need to bring you know, attention to and focus on. Um, what we're doing is asking the training department, as busy as they are, to do a little bit more uh, field assignments, as well as the initiative that Cheryl started was getting the um, administrative team out there. We're seeing good results from that and reminding operators to be safe and um, be as safe as possible, pay attention to other things. Um, we get good feedback from that as well, riding the, the routes and everything. So uh, verbal assaults, we did see one this month. Um, care stayed on van with the actual uh, consistency. We didn't see an increase in numbers or anything of that nature, nothing to bring any attention to, but we're staying on top of that so far as their accidents and events. And if there are no questions, that concludes the safety performance report for the month of March. 
All right, any questions from my colleagues? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board, everyone. Uh, present to you real briefly the operations report starting on page 30 of your board packet. Uh, the key performance in indicators uh, for this past month pretty much remain steady, uh, with exception of uh, specialized service care. Uh, so we're working with our uh, provider, National Express, uh, to address some of their challenges. Uh, they're dealing with staffing issues, uh, similar to what we're experiencing on the fixed route side. Uh, and they're also working through a labor agreement uh, with the union also. Uh, so hopefully they'll get that resolved. Uh, and some other centers and so forth to uh, build up their workforce. Uh, currently, we're sitting at 200 as of the end of March, uh, 234 full-time, 28 part-time operators. Uh, that was a net gain of two operators um, from February. Uh, we are uh, actively recruiting. Uh, we have class that started uh, last week on April the 10th. Uh, we have another class starting on April the 24th, uh, looking at projected number of 12 people for that class. Uh, we have another class that we're still ongoing uh, interviewing and hiring uh, for the next class that starts on May the 8th. Uh, and then we have another class starting right after that on May the 22nd. So we stepped up our efforts uh, to increase our classes instead of monthly to uh, bi-weekly uh, to get those numbers up to where we need them. Uh, and we are starting to see uh, some um, positive dividends, uh, as Cheryl mentioned earlier, uh, with the uh, MOU. Uh, that should help uh, with retention uh, and recruitment. Uh, our task force, uh, we mentioned that at a prior meeting, uh, meets weekly uh, and putting several initiatives together. Uh, we were at Tyson at one of their job fairs uh, the other week, uh, and we actually have about uh, over 100 applications uh, that we distributed. We took a bus out there uh, and uh, we ran out of applications, so we had to rush to send some more out there. Uh, and we're starting to get some of those people uh, as well. They have to stay on in order to um, get their service package until May 12th when uh, the plan actually closes. Uh, but we're also uh, participating in another job fair with them uh, on May 3rd. Uh, we're partnering with Fort Eustace uh, to uh, take part in their uh, monthly uh, recruitment efforts as far as uh, military personnel that are exiting from the military. Uh, so we're taking regular trips out there as well uh, so that when people transition out of the military and retire, uh, they can look at GRTC as a career uh, for operators and mechanics as well. Uh, and some other things we're doing um, with the task force, uh, looking at uh, from a marketing advertising standpoint, uh, working with our TV stations uh, to see how we can expand uh, once our uh, conference we end with this round of advertising in June, uh, as we start in fall, uh, to move forward with our commercials there uh, to see how we can branch out and get um, uh, more. Uh, operators uh, as we move forward. Uh, we're also looking at uh, apprenticeship programs uh, with the Department of Labor uh, to help out on that side. We have a peer support group uh, that's about to start as well. Uh, so we got quite a bit going on. Um, uh, and I could go on, but uh, Cheryl's giving me the eye like for my Jay off now. So I will uh, shut up for now. And unless there's any questions, uh, that concludes my report. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Actually, this is um this is good stuff. So we, we need to hear it. This recruiting piece is um is key to us getting back up to where we are, you know, like 19, 2019, 2020 levels. That's our goal. So, yeah, so hearing um hearing about these efforts are, are really good. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um question on the spectrum on time performance. I'm trying to remember how that is revealed to you. Is that the complaints of where are you? It, how, how, does, how is the on-time performance engaged and how do you know that it was, you know, uh, what it was this month where your goal was 92% and you were at 80%? Uh, actually, there are a few that are route match. Okay, so okay. that's engaged. How is it That makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, yes. I don't know if I heard you say that we're actually going to start two classes a month. Me too. Did he yes, just have that? Yes. But, um, with the two classes a month, with the increase in pay, um, with the excitement that seems to be going on um, 
both in this building and on the street with everything that's going on. It, it really is, to your point, um, tremendous what we've seen happen in the last 12 months. And I think that this is going to get us back to the path that we need to be on to, to have the operators to at least get back to the standards mm -hmm. that we had in 2019 so we can start talking about expansion in the future. So you said you have a class already going that, that started at some point during the month of April. Yes, April 10th. And how many people are in that class? Uh, four starting in that class. And then you have another one you said on the 24th? Yes, sir. And how many in that? Projected 12. Okay, wow. Okay. And, and still hiring, we're still interviewing yesterday, today, and always. And then, <laughs> and so in, in May, you're doing two classes as well? May, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. May the 8th and the 22nd. And so for March, you said we had a net plus two. Yes. Okay. And um, going to Tyson and recognizing that they were going to have a um, significant number of people that were looking, taking the bus over there. I mean, that was just also great leadership. Thank you for um, all the efforts that you're doing to not just sit back and wait for people to come to us, but to go to them to get the staff that we need to be able to operate the city. And how many days? The Tyson piece worked. I mean, how did that go? I mean, basically, we had uh, two of the uh, one of our uh, recruiters from my HR department, uh, and, and one of my HR general journalists uh, used to work in operations. So she took the bus over uh, along with the, with the recruiter, uh, and they basically had hand you know paper uh, applications. But what we're looking at doing next go around is uh, we're going to be able to do both paper and online. Uh, so we'll have a bus and probably a mobile command unit uh, where we have computers in those buses and the vehicle of access so they can be able to Wi-Fi. So they'll be able to uh, apply online uh, as well as on paper maybe. Yes, sir. Um, so have y'all adjusted how when you make an offer, <coughs> hire somebody and there's a gap between when one of your training classes start, do they get paid prior to that or is there a week? Well, what we're doing is because we're stepping up our uh, classes starting in two weeks uh, and, and the adjustments that you saw the wages as far as how they're paid once they start training, um, we actually start them at that wage from day one. Uh, and then they go 75% and then after six months and then move up from there. So they get paid starting the day the classes start? Yes, sir. And with two class two um, classes each month, they should be you no know, more than a two week break period to get started. So, which I, I think that was the problem before. If you had only had one class a month, you hired yes, you made somebody an offer and you had to wait a month. I, I know Henrik had benefited from at least one of those employees. I guess. <laughs> and yes, we, we tighten that gap uh, to, to some degree. And, and for those individuals who do need a uh, CDL who come in with uh, no credentials. Uh, we've actually uh, tweaked that as well. So we have uh, one of our uh, former trainers who actually retired uh, and is working as a part-time supervisor. So he's helping specifically with that group uh, so that they will come along a little faster in terms of getting their certification with their actual uh, CDL learners. Uh, so we tweak that as well because we got so many folks coming in uh, and some without any uh, CDLs or any credentials. So we make sure that we put some things in place to address that. All right, good stuff. Yes, you've answered this before. But can you remind this group, uh, person enters class before they're in class now, the 12 and enter class later? When do they appear on this sheet as a full time equivalent or an operator? When, I would we'll say graduate. Uh, and, and what is that? Uh, that could be anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks. Gotcha. So we have a February class. Um, we should have six in that group. Uh, they'll be graduating within the next few weeks uh, in time for our May work. So you may not see those numbers uh, reflect uh, on this month's report, uh, but as we get into the latter part of spring and summer, you'll yep. see those numbers uh, reflect that. I, I, I would I would say that the, the data we're seeing now, I know we've asked for these charts and they look fantastic. There's there's six charts, maybe eight here that show offer staffing in different different ways. If there's one thing I guess I'd ask for is that pipeline. Yeah, if we can see, you know, what is in the pipeline, what's in the class form, was it just in February? So, so if we could see kind of where you're filling that pipeline really well right now, and we know that in eight to 12 weeks, we're going to reap some benefits of that. And 
that is probably June, July. I guess I'm curious as to this February benefit is going to be reached in soon. Uh, you said what is the work cost right now? Next, next, week. next week. So if possible, I, and the only reason I'm asking is because I've seen the success from our last ask. We asked for this stuff and it's fantastic. The full time equipment bar chart, the, 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 this data is spectacular for us to track. And if we go back and see what's in the pipeline or what's in training, what's coming, it'll allow us to to project the data of where we're going to see these bar charts in the next two months, if possible. Easy? I'm smiling. Yes. <laughs> so much. Let me share this with you. Uh, yes, we do track that uh, on a regular basis, uh, and we do review it as part of our task force. So we develop a chart, a projection chart going out for the next several years. If we have X amount of operations to start, uh, and, and also leave. Uh, yep. So so we track that on a monthly basis and we update that. Uh, but to give you a sneak preview, I'll add it on going forward. January's class, January 23rd, we had uh, our class one this year, six started, four graduated, one terminated, one resigned, group of 66.67%. February 27th, class two, eight started, six still in training, two resigned. March 27th, class three, 10 started, nine still in training, one resigned. Uh, April 10th, four in class. Um, of course, those four still in training. Class five, uh, 24 projected for 12. Class six, eight. Class four. I can go on. And that's go perfect. On. And I think that's the data that I'd love for this group to be able to see. So the success is already appearing. And I think the excitement of the success that's coming is what we'd love to be able to recognize. Thank you. Our operators need to know that that's coming too because <laughs> they don't want to see that. Right. Um, to answer that, yes, we are starting to have operating focus groups because recruitment is important, but retention is also important. So we are having focus groups led by Ashley and Avery, myself, and Joe are in there to let them know what's going on about the recruiting, about the, the training, but also to hear their issues and concerns to see how we can address their issues and concerns so that we can retain them. So we have opened that line of communication with assistant operators. <coughs> And we're doing about five at a time, so that's not too large of a group. But we also are doing employee meetings on a quarterly basis where we invite them all in to hear everything that's going on in the company. So that line of communication is there, so they can do that. And anecdotally, we've had a um, few operators who left the company in uh, recent mm -hmm. months. Uh, they have heard about what is coming, yes. and uh, they have expressed possibly some interest in coming back. We have one in this current one's class. already in the current. Yes, yeah. we came back last week. Mm -hmm. All right, any more questions? Thank you. Um, um. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. We're going to make this report down on page 34 of your four packet. I am proud to announce that currently in the maintenance department about three new female techs. And that brings our total up to only one vacancy for mechanics and one for GU. We had a GU to retire at the end of this week. We do have applications out of now, and we're accepting um, plenty more in the future. That ends the maintenance report. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Questions? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Sir, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, the ridership report is found on page 37 of your packet. Uh, some highlights. Our total fixed route were up almost 16% month over month. Uh, looking back at March 2019, um, we did compare it to 2020 uh, for January, February. Obviously, March is kind of the beginning of the pandemic, so we're going back to 2019 as a touchstone. Um, local fixed group is up 26% from 2019. Uh, the pulse is down only 14.5%. Uh, that's a lot better than what we've been seeing in recent months. In recent months, it's been more in the Maybe the 25 to 30 percent range, so that's very encouraging. And overall, our fixed total for fixed route is up um, nearly 13 percent compared to March of 2019. Also, if you look a little further down the page, I wanted to highlight that looking at fiscal year to date, 
uh, you know, as we close our third quarter here, we are trending 9% uh, above FY19 uh, in terms of total ridership on fixed route. Uh, we are on pace to beat both FY19 and FY20 ridership totals on fixed routes. So that's very encouraging to see. Um, and moving on to the quarterly report that was presented in the development committee. Um, so if there are no questions, that concludes my report. Any questions? All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I am going to be um, speaking on the rider progress report, which can be found in 86 and 135 of the packet. Um, you will notice right away that there was a, an increase in the number of complaints in the month of March. Um, it could be a correlation between that and the increase in the ridership, as well as um, I know we had a, a spike in the call volume in the call center. Um, the weather's getting nicer, people moving around more, so that could be um, part of that. In particular, too, um, some things that kind of stand out that we spoke on the past couple of months, looking at um, passed up passenger count, that, that number is still high as far as non verified, um, as well as group operators and so forth. And some of what we were finding through the investigation process was um, looking at those non verified, for example, group operators. We had a lot of scenarios. So they, um, I'll call them and call to the um, customer service department, um, report the information. We record that based on time, date, location, and other details. We just couldn't verify that with their statements of place to place, for example. Um, we had a situation where one of the passengers stated that the um, operator sprayed disinfectant spray in his face, um, which that I took the right away. Of course, I actually spoke with this call. And looking at the information that was provided, um, we did the investigation, looked at the um, video footage, audio, and so forth. And although this scenario took place in that the operator was spraying disinfectant spray in their area, the doors were open and the operator was opening the window. And at no point in time did, did the operator spray in the individual's face. Um, so we were not able to verify based on the way that it was stated. Um, another example would be where um, a caller stated that the operator spoke very rudely to her. She, would, she had some mobility challenges, so she was scrolling off the bus. She crossed over in front of the bus, and she stated that the operator said, move me. Mm. And so, of course, that's another one that got our attention right away. On the investigation, of course, um, listening to the audio as well as the video, we do see this scenario happening. But at no point in time did the operator make those statements. So we have a lot of scenarios, unfortunately, that are like that. Um, looking at pass up passenger. Again, we had a lot of scenarios where the operator is servicing the stop. Maybe individuals got off, some got on. We couldn't verify that anyone was passed up in those instances. Or it could be that um, we saw instances where um, the operator services stop. Maybe some got off. Maybe some got on, some are still sitting on the bench. The operator pulls away. If you look at the um, curbside camera, we can see as the bus is moving away where someone stood up, but you don't know if they're intending to catch the bus or not. Um, certainly, the operator would be able to determine that at that time. So a lot of scenarios, unfortunately, like that, um, where it could have been that they wanted to catch the bus, but we don't know, and perhaps they called in a later time. Um, and then looking at even the late schedule, we had scenarios where um, the operator may have been at the end of the line, they're on a meal break, and the passenger feel like the operator should have left at a certain time where um, they were actually in their break and that type of thing. So those are a lot of the scenarios we're encountering. And of course, we'll continue to monitor those when it comes to verified complaints. Those are, of course, given to the department heads, so for example, the group operator passed up passenger and so forth. That information is passed along to Tim and the to um, you know, supervision to catch up with the operator for coaching opportunities or any type of progressive discipline that may be able to work. And we'll also <coughs> note um, commendation for the month of March. We had eight, um, three for customer service, um, four were for 
operators um, individually. Then we had one that um, the caller or the you know, customer stated, they are so grateful for GRTC trained and bus operators, literally have never had a bad experience. So that concludes my report for the month of March. Do you have questions for me? <clears throat> Do you let people that complain about a certain incident know that we're going to review audio and video so because sometimes all of us have, have an incident and the more we think about it the more the incident something else happened in the incident um and sometimes the video and the audio actually remind us that that didn't actually happen so i don't know how we share that information but i know that um sometimes our own minds we're convinced what we're saying is true but it's not and we do have a, a follow-up process, um, in particular with a couple of the um, examples that I mentioned, where I actually followed up with the, the person who called in the complaint. I, um, I don't put out anything specific as far as that not what happened, but I do uh, reassure them that we were able to review the audio and the video footage of um, what they stated took place and was happening. Um, we don't have, I thought we don't have audio on the bus. I thought it was your video. No, it's audio and video. Oh, yes. oh okay. Hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, so we have audio on the bus and we still have all this non American Yes, unfortunately. Um, even with the um, song, a couple, a few of people who are um, at the pole station, mm -hmm. where we have the footage on the bus, but also from the platform. Mm -hmm. And again, having that extra piece, of course, helps with the investigation process. But unfortunately, um, it isn't always as is described by the, the, the person who's complaining. Okay. So we don't say that it didn't happen. Correct. We just say it's not verified. Correct. So we don't say, um, well, we verified 10 of these non verified didn't happen, even though we know they did. Um, we just keep them all in the non verified. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it could be a case of, um, you know, we don't recall exactly the date or the time, or, but based on what they provide to us, um, the date, the time, the location, and so forth, um, it could be all um, there. But we, we always follow up, you know, with the um, call or the person who's complaining that we need more information. Um, but sometimes, again, we're just not able to verify this. As we stated in the All right. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, let's move on to finance. Um, and Jim, do you want to just jump on the back of this? Okay. I think when we're each done, we probably won't have much left. But okay. All right. So we're going to swap it. Um, Ms. Smith, did you have anything with the bell? Yes. Thanks with the bell. No, I can give a brief well, summary if you want to hear that. But. Yeah, well, look, I'm just going to jump jump in for him. And then sure. we'll go after that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. For Mr. Chair and members of the board, starting on page 56 of your package, you'll find the February 2023 <laughs> report. I'm going to speak off of uh, page 57. Thank you guys for having that up there. So, for the eight months uh, end of February uh, 2023, very similar story as we've been reading in the prior months. Revenues are on payroll to budget by around $4 million, with a budget of $47.5 million. And this is basically being driven by un un unfavorable rev federal funds revenue due to lower the budget of operating expenditures. Um, so that's basically the entirety of the, the variance. So on the operations side, we have a $3.4 million favorable variance, uh, which is driven as we before is lower the budget expenses by way of the result of the lower budget payments. <coughs> we basically are seeing a favorable volume variance offset by unfavorable rate. So majority of this $1.99 million, about 65% uh, of it's in the fringe, about only about 10% is in the operator uh, wage rate line. Um, and that's as we discussed before, is because the tenants incentives as well as the ship rentals as well as the uh, retention and, and hiring bonuses were not contemplated in the 2023 budget. Um, in addition to that, we still see lower than budget materials and supplies, about favorable about 440,000. 
and uh, purchased uh, transportation services slightly lower than a uh, budget about 150,000 due to lower demand, as well as we have a, a about 340,000 variable variance on the consulting project, which is just about the timing that we kick off the certain initiatives that are going to start later in the fourth quarter. And um, and just to due to the timing of these provisions for uh, uninsured motorist liability. All in all, through the eight months, we have a uh, net operating surplus of about 3.9 million. Uh, the finance committee we discussed, we are projecting probably somewhere from about 3.8 million to maybe about four and a half million dollars. We're going to go vet that out with, with regards to the new uh, wage rate structure that we're putting in place. Um, strong balance sheet and cash uh, flow. Uh, cash position is about 15.1 million dollars, of which 11.2 million dollars is in the operating. Uh, I have some notice we discussed in the finance committee meeting. Uh, we've initiated uh, sweeps with the Wells Fargo accounts, basically to sweep anything above a certain pay rate uh, into a treasury plus, which is earned about 435 basis points, so that we're going to put some of this money, money uh, to earn some additional revenue to support the operations. Um, the slide that I also would call out here is on page. 77. That's the CBTA funds. It's uh, through the month of March, uh, where we have a quarterly reporting obligation that would be May 15th. So I just want to have a that report with you. Uh, this one's a little bit different due to the time of the receipts. There's actually four months of receipts in there. So uh, as you can see, you know, between 2.4 million to 3 million is received uh, each of the four months. Um, I have the note there in the receipts column. Uh, the interest income is increasing after the reverse yield curve. This is being extended. This is invested in LGIP extended maturity. And you can see that the uh, there, there's uh, unrealized gains that have overtaken. So the unrealized gains we're experiencing in the first quarter have overtaken the cumulative unrealized losses over the last three quarters. All in all, uh, at the end of uh, March 31st, uh, the balance is uh, $33.5 million, of which about 11.8 million was in the Wells Fargo account, and 22.929 uh, million was in the LGIF. And just as a recollection, uh, April 1st, we grew to 5.4 million dollars in the Wells Fargo operating. So um, at this point, I will take any questions. Questions. <clears throat> No questions. All right, well, you want to jump in? Sure. Um, <laughs> in this committee, we did also uh, vote to, um, as a committee, to recommend to put into the um, consent agenda, which we already voted on, the regional public transportation plan. Um, we went over our financing, um, how we're investing, which has all been presented. Um, the other thing that we did talk about that we did it earlier um, also was the um, pay changes that were agreed upon, and we just looked at it to make sure that you know that they were able to be sustainable. Um, we reviewed that and we felt good that that what we were doing was sustainable. And um, other than that, I think everything else went presented. So the other the one other note that for our next clients to meet, which is on May 11th at 3 o'clock, we're going to um, dis discuss the fiscal 24 budget book and the, the adopted budget of the or the proposed budget as the we're bringing forward to the plan to on May 11th and then through the day for the entire day, the day 24th, 48th. So I guess everybody's welcome to attend the finance committee meeting to go through the budget book. And just so people know, all of our committees are um, online and you can view them online. So if, to your point earlier, we do go through this a lot faster than they have in the past because we are doing that committee work. But if you want to see that work being done in committee, you can actually log into those committees and watch it. Or you can go back and see it. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. At our development committee, we reviewed the quarterly report for <coughs> and the performance remains consistent on a route similar to what we see in the performance. 
um, but that quarterly report helps to identify underperforming routes, and those will be evaluated in the upcoming transit strategic plan for potential adjustments. <laughs> the downtown transfer station is on track to be in service in May 21st. And a lot of the main booking changes um, revolve around the downtown transfer station being operational in May. Um, there was a Title VI evaluation done of the main booking changes, and that showed no impacts. And we also reviewed the FY24 Regional Public Transportation Plan, which was on the consent agenda. Um, so that was the summary for the development. Thank Any you so much. Questions? Questions? All right. Uh, next up, uh, is that you, Mr. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, CFT has started working on new vision, mission, and goals. And um, we'll provide it to some of you will have a retreat where we will present back to the board and get fired and get feedback on that. So that's a huge undertaking that we've chosen to take in house. It's been crystal areas. And um, that's it. That's all I have. All right. Uh, I think I shared comments that I had earlier. Again, I just continue to. Um, thank our staff, our team, for the hard work that they are doing here to make us a world-class transportation system. And, um, you know, we set the bar high, and, um, and that's what we're trying to do for. So I just want to let you guys know we appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, any other business to come before the board at this point? All right. Well, thank you. Meeting adjourned.